Church Online. I'm Rachel and I'm a member of Team Calvary. I'm so glad that you're joining us today because today is Communion Sunday. Please take a moment to prepare the communion emblems, some juice and some crackers, so that you can participate in communion with us during the service. If this is your first time joining us today, welcome. I'm so glad that you're here. Please take a moment, click the welcome tab, you can fill in your information, and a member of our team will connect with you later this week. I'd also like to thank all of you for your continued generosity during this time. Because of you, Calvary has been able to continue to minister in our city, in our nation, and around the world. If you would like to partner with us, you can donate by clicking the Give button, by visiting calvary.ca slash give, or by texting the number at the bottom of your screen. All right, Calvary, let's worship. Good morning, Calvary. Welcome to Church 2021. We're going to get this year started with communion, so grab your juice and grab your crackers. All I see is the battle You see my victory And all I see is the mountain You see a mountain move And as I walk through the shadow Your love surrounds me There's nothing to fear now, for I am safe with you. So when I fight, I'll fight on my knees, with my hands lifted high. Oh God, the battle belongs to you, and every fear I'll lay at your feet, and I'll sing through the night. There's nothing impossible for you. When all I see are the ashes, you see the beauty. When all I see is a cross, God, you see.
you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shot in the shadows, you win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. Almighty fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shot in the shadow, you win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of
stop, you never stop working Final breath upon the cross 
100% fired up. That's some good stuff. We're here to celebrate communion. Happy New Year, everyone. Uh, 2020 was such a dumpster fire that 2021 has to be better. And we're so excited to have this chance to share uh, communion together. Whoops. To share communion together to make sure that we remember the great things that are coming our way in 2021. The scripture is still the same. The scripture is still true that your God has a plan for you. And as we take these elements that you've had time to put them together, to remember, to remember the cross, to remember what Jesus did for you. Let's take our bread, our cracker, and remember the words of the Lord in 1 Corinthians. Jesus said, 
Take heed, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this together in my name. That broken body was so that you could have wholeness in every area of your life. Wholeness inside of your physique. If there's something that ails you, wholeness is yours in Jesus' name. You got something going on inside of your mind, a little something that's been uh, at you for some time, an anxiety, a pressure, a fear, something like that, you're freed in Jesus' name, that you would be whole body, soul, spirit. We thank you for it. And in the same manner, he said that his shed blood was for our forgiveness for sins. In the same manner, likewise, that take this cup and drink in my name. Jesus, we thank you that we have freedom in you and who the sun sets free is free indeed. Lord, we're looking forward to what you have for us in this 2021 20, year. We look forward with enthusiasm, with excitement that you have great things lined up for us. We stand before you proper, whole, in every area and every way. And we're believing for great things as we head into this year. Not because we deserve anything, but just because you're a great God who gives good gifts to his children. We thank you for this time where we remember all that you've done for us. We're so thankful and we do thank you in Jesus' name. Let's enjoy the service. Hey, this is Vince. I'm one of the pastors at the church. And as we look forward to uh, 2021 and the new year, uh, we start thinking of like renewed things, what's renewed in my own life. Uh, we're very excited to be offering in February 2021 uh, Freedom Sessions. We all have different uh, thorns in our flesh, uh, different things that uh, affect us differently. Perhaps it's uh, past uh, problems or past pains or past patterns that have kind of shaped a bit of who we are that we're not entirely in love with and we're looking to be freed from those things. It's different for everyone and it manifests different for everyone. Uh, as we take a look at 2021, as we offer these freedom sessions, I want to encourage you, if you're thinking about a way that perhaps you'd like to uh, see some change and be freed in an area of your life, uh, let's explore that together. It's a 20-week class uh, beginning February 2nd. Uh, register at calvary.ca slash freedom session. Or if you're just curious for more information, reach out to me, Vince at calvary.ca, and, and we can get a dialogue going. I would love nothing more than to see 21, 2021 be a year of freedom for you. Uh, it's uh, a fantastic opportunity. Take advantage of it and let's explore what God has for you in 2021. Happy New Year, Calvary. Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year to you. Thank you very much. Happy New Year to you as well. It's great to be starting a new year, right? Yes. Yeah. You know, Scripture challenges us to seek the welfare of our city, to pray to the Lord uh, on its behalf. And so we need to be praying for our city and for our nation. Uh, we've come through a lot. We still have a ways to go. Let's believe God for health in our, in our city, in our communities, and, and for a resolution to the challenges that we're facing. And we know that God has the answer, but God wants yes. his people to be praying. And this is going to be a fantastic year, and it all starts this month. What's coming up soon? Well, we have a new series starting, actually, today. Today. <laughs> it's uh, Mixed Emojis. Uh, it's a, a series that focuses on our emotions and how to scripturally see our emotions serve us instead of the other way around. It's a team-taught series, so all of our pastors will be involved. Today, Pastor Brad is going to kick things off, so you're going to be blessed. And Pastor Mark is coming back at the end oh, of the month great. to join the series, too. What else is coming? Well, we have 21 days of prayer. So every January, we do this initiative, and it's a small group and individual uh, devotional that you can be a part of. It starts on January the 10th, yes. and you can find all the information on Calvary Connect. So it's a great online devotional. We encourage you to be a part of that. And also, Freedom Session is coming up on February the 2nd. All the information uh, is also on Calvary Connect, so, so jump in and join that as well. Yes. What's coming up next? Well, we What's have coming up next? a year in review coming up right after this. Yes. And so we thought it would be fun to actually do it backwards. Right. So we're going to start with 
December 2020 and work our way back to January 2020 because it ends with some really wonderful shots of a full house where we're having a service. Remember people in the building? Church? And worshiping and people shaking hands and people hugging. And we just want you to remember, yes. put that in your head so that that's something you can be believing for because we're really believing that it's gonna come back for 2021. It might be slow, Amen. but we're gonna get there. We want you to have a picture, a vision of what it was and what it still could be. This year, I believe, is gonna be a year of comeback. Yes. Yeah, so we want you to be a part of it. Uh, we love you, Calvary. Yes. We, we are continuing to pray for you on a daily basis. You're going to be blessed by today's message and blessed by these photos that are about to come in this montage. So get it in your heart and get believing as we seek the welfare of our city and for our church family. today online. If you're looking to have someone join with you in prayer, uh, hit that live prayer button and someone from my team will join with you and connect with you and agree with you on that thing. So uh, let's uh, get into this next phase of the service with the speaker. Uh, let's show them some love. Hit that heart button in the chat and get on with today's message. Hello everyone, Happy New Year, welcome to 2021. Have you ever come across uh, people who say or post something like, good riddance 2020, I'm glad you're over, hoping 2021 is a better year. You see, I, I see posts or hear people talking like that every single year. And one thing that I've noticed is that Every year, it's pretty much the same people saying the same thing. If every year is that bad, you might want to just rethink yourself a little bit. I don't know. And th the other thing that I've noticed is that I don't really always understand what they're getting at because I don't view years that way. But this year, I get it. 2020 was strange, crazy, difficult. It was unprecedented. In fact, I heard the word unprecedented an unprecedented number of times in 2020. See, last year stirred up a lot of emotions as we had to navigate through things we never thought we'd have to navigate through. We faced a lot of uncertainty as we dealt with isolation and other things that were magnified because we were isolated and, and frustrated and, and stuck in this world of uncertainty. It was an emotional year. And as we go into 2021, we're still dealing with a pandemic. We're still dealing with the uncertainty that comes with all that that brings up and the many other issues that may, you may be struggling with just because life can be difficult. So as we enter into a year like this, and as we take the month of January, our pastoral team is going to be taking us through a new message series called Mixed Emojis, where we look at um, what the Bible says about navigating our emotions and how God uses our emotions. 
Before we dive into it today, I want to invite you to join us for 21 Days of Prayer uh, starting on January 10th. You can register by uh, going online to um, calvary.ca slash devotional. It's an online devotional. starts on January 10th. Join us as we pray together to kick off our new year. We're also very excited to, to start Freedom Session on February 2nd. This is an opportunity for anyone who wants to uh, confront and, and work on past pains, current problems or patterns that you desire to be freed from, things that hinder your walk with Christ and maybe even hinder your relationships with your friends and family. And you can get more information on that and register by going to calvary.ca slash Freedom Session. All right, today we're going to look at a couple of different things. One is uh, just a general overview of how we approach emotions from a biblical perspective. And another one is just zeroing in on a single emotion. But to start off, let's look at Galatians chapter 5, verse 24. And it says this, Those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. See, Paul writes this, after identifying the works of the flesh and the fruit of the Spirit. The works of the flesh are the way of the world, and the fruit of the Spirit is the way of God. But because of our sin nature that we're born with, the works of the flesh are our default. But when we come to Christ, and as the Holy Spirit works on us to mold us more into the image of Christ, our character will change. And how we respond to the uncertainty and the difficult challenges that we face in life will be changed. It doesn't happen overnight. It's a growth process that continues on for the rest of our lives. And this doesn't mean that our emotions go away or that we suppress them. It means that we learn to express them in a proper way. Paul wrote the book of Colossians to a church that was indulging in extreme self-denial and seeking after ecstatic spiritual experiences. The result of their, of their seeking after these things was that they had forgotten Christ. And in Colossians 2.8, Paul says, See to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the world, and not according to Christ. So the term philosophy has a lot of baggage that comes along with it, but really what Paul is meaning in this passage is a way of life. The Colossians had given into and started following a way of life that was contrary to what the Bible teaches. And today there are many worldviews and many ways of life that are not biblical. Some say that we need to detach completely from the world and deny our emotions to achieve enlightenment. Others encourage people to fully indulge their emotions and be led by them. But the Bible doesn't tell us to do either of those things. The Bible doesn't tell us to detach from our emotions or to be led by our emotions. The Bible tells us that we were created in the image of God. And this includes our emotions. But we were broken because of the fall. And that includes our emotions. How we react, how our emotions come up, how we respond has been broken and marred by the fall. So today we're going to look at how we can process our emotions in a biblical way. And as I look back over this past year of 2020, and I reflect on all that happened and all the things that were uncertain and, and all the... Uh, all the struggles that came along with that um, as we dealt with things as a nation, as a community, as, as my family dealt with things that, that we did not foresee coming, uh, uh, an emotion that comes to mind, an emotion that I feel deeply as a theme of my 2020 was sadness. 
And I'm sure we all experience sadness because of the isolation, the uncertainty, or because of other factors that we experience just because we're humans in a fallen world dealing with other fallen humans. But the Bible actually has a lot to say about sadness, and we're going to look at what the Bible says about how to process sadness and how God uses our sadness. So in order to process sadness, first of all, we need to know where sadness comes from or, or how it arises in us. And sadness comes from sin. Sadness is a result of the fall and sadness is a response to the sin in the world. And there's really two ways that sadness comes up in us. One is that sadness is a response to our own decisions. Sadness comes up in us because of the decisions that we made. Because we all make sinful decisions that can cause sorrow for us and for our loved ones. And God can use this kind of sadness to lead us to repentance. In the book of 2 Corinthians, Paul responds to the grief that the Corinthians have experienced because of their sinful actions. He has chastised them in the past and says that their grief is a good thing because it led them to repentance. In 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10, Paul says, For godly grief produces a repentance that leads to salvation without regret, whereas worldly grief produces death. The sadness that you experience as a follower of Christ, if it's, if it's a sadness where you come face to face with the realization that you have done wrong, that you have made mistakes and you have sinned against a holy God, should lead you to make reconciliation, to repent, to turn from that way and turn towards Christ and follow after him. It should lead us to make amends with the people that we have wronged. A story that Jesus told that illustrates how sadness can lead us to repentance is found in, in Luke 15. It's a story of the prodigal son. And if you know it, you know that a son comes to his father and says, Dad, I want my inheritance. I want to go and do my own thing. And this, was, this, is, this would be a big deal today, but it was an even bigger deal in the first century in Judea. And the son goes off. He goes to a faraway place. He makes friends with a bunch of strange people that, that he didn't grow up with. And he spends all his money. He squanders it. He parties. And eventually he finds himself broke. And all those friends he thought he had are gone. And the only thing he can do is go into a, a field and, and work with the pigs. And we've got to understand that this is the lowest of the low. If you've ever heard someone hitting rock bottom, the prodigal son hit rock bottom because a Jewish person would not touch a pig because they were an unclean animal, but yet he's got to go feed them. And he's so, he's so far gone, he's, he's, he's so deep in sorrow that he looks and he sees what the pigs are eating and thinks, that looks good enough for me to eat because that's all I have. And in that sad, sorrowful state, as he realizes his error, he says in verses 18 and 19, I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. Now, of course, the son goes back, and he's welcomed back fully as the son, which demonstrates God's forgiveness to us, demonstrates how God welcomes in those who truly repent and turn to him, that we are brought back into God's family. But this, this illustration of sadness shows us that when we realize our sadness, when we maybe have to hit rock bottom, God can actually use that for the good by bringing you back to him. So, 
So if you are facing sadness and you realize it's a result of your own decisions, realize that maybe God is calling you back to him. He's calling you to repent, to turn away from what you're doing, to stop it and turn back to Christ, follow after him, ask for forgiveness, and, and stay on the narrow path. And know, know that you will veer off when, because we are still being worked on. We are still growing in Christ. But follow after Christ. So if you find yourself there, turn and follow after Christ. Now the second kind of sadness, or the second source of sadness in our lives, is a diff- more difficult one for us to deal with because it's, it's sadness that, that wells up in us because it's a response to outside forces that are beyond our control. And there's really, there's really two things that God can, can use this for. He can, he can one, he can, um, he can uh, incur, or lead us to um, make a difference, to, to go into action. Like Nehemiah, who was saddened when he heard that the walls of Jerusalem were down and that they were susceptible to, to uh, raiding parties. And Nehemiah went and rebuilt the walls because he was saddened by that. But at other times, it's sadness that doesn't lead us or motivate us to do anything. And this is hard to deal with. We see over and over again throughout the Psalms that King David dealt with this kind of sadness. See, David had many mountaintop experiences before he was king. He, he stood up to Goliath. He was, he was a military leader. But he had people all around him trying to kill him. He had to run and hide. And, and he was literally on the run for his life multiple times. And throughout the Psalms, you see him cry out to God, expressing his sadness, asking, why, when will you remove these enemies from me, God? Why is this happening? And that kind of sadness, this kind of sadness that I think we've all experienced, and we've all cried out, why is this happening, God? Sometimes we all feel like Job, who who lost everything and sat down and said, why was I even born? Why, God, why have you allowed this to happen to me? And maybe like Job, we cry out and, and the answer we get from God isn't as, isn't as, as uh, neat and tidy as we'd like it to be. Because when God spoke to Job, he, he went over all the things that God knows about and how big God is and how, and how much uh, he controls and how big his plan is and how small we are and how hard it is for us to understand it. And Job's actual response to God is to repent, is to repent of the things that, that he was claiming about God because he did not fully understand. So what do we do with that? That is challenging. But I want to read a passage from 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 6 and 7, it says this, In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the testing of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So God can use that kind of sadness where we don't understand why, where, where we, we struggle because it's not something that we did. It's, it's, it's just happened to us and we're responding to the world in this way. He can use it by producing endurance in us. He can can have us, as it tests our faith, as we rely more fully on him. And I want to read another passage from now from 2 Corinthians that illustrates why we need to trust in God when we're going through difficult times and how we we can lean on him. And Paul writes in chapter 12, Uh, Verses 7 to 9, he says, To keep me from becoming conceited because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations, because Paul was given so much 
from God to keep him from becoming conceited, a thorn was given him in the flesh to keep him from becoming conceited. Three times he pleaded with the Lord about this, that it should leave him. But then Paul says, he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. And Paul concludes, therefore, I will boast all the more gladly in my weakness so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. How can you have your faith tested? How can you endure through times where you just don't understand? Times when you feel so low, you're dealing with such sorrow. It's to fully rely on God, to recognize that his grace is sufficient, that you have been set free from from the curse of death and sin, and you have been made alive in Christ. And that his power is made perfect in our weakness. That is not easy to do, but we have a choice to make in will we, will we rely on Christ or will we try and fight against that and rely on our own cleverness to get through it? And, and it doesn't work. We need to rely on Christ and recognize that, that he will bring us through these challenging times. Back to 1 Peter, he says, in verse, starting in chapter 3, verse 14, But even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled. You see, Peter's writing to a group of people who are experiencing sorrow because they are being oppressed and persecuted for their faith. And they are in deep sadness, but Peter encourages them to rely on Christ and to endure through these difficult times and says, But in your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect, having a good conscience, So that when you are slandered, those who revile your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good than if that should be God's will than for doing evil. Sometimes God's will is for us to go through sad times. It produces in us a stronger faith as we endure and And it it can be a way for us to actually help spread the gospel when people see how we endure the hard times, how we get through the difficult times with joy. And that's a weird one to think that you can be sad and have joy at the same time because joy is something that comes from deep within, knowing that we have been redeemed by Christ, bought back with a price, knowing that we have an eternity with him and that the sufferings of this world are nothing compared to the riches of eternity. When we go through a difficult time, someone can look at us and be like, how can you be, how can you have hope going through this time, even though we know you're sad, that you're dealing with sorrow? It's because of what Christ has done. And Peter ends it with this by saying, for Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he may bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but being made alive in the Spirit. And that is a key for us to remember. that Jesus suffered. In fact, Isaiah 53 verse 3 says this in a prophecy about Jesus. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one for whom men hid their faces, he was despised. And we esteemed him not. Jesus' life was marked by sadness. Times of sadness. He was born to a poor family in a poor part of the world, surrounded by animals and placed in a feeding trough. Not long after his birth, his family had to flee to protect his life because a king was seeking to kill him. And as he grew into a man, he even says that he had nowhere to lay his head. He had no home base. And then in the last hours of his life leading up to his, his, his execution, 
He was betrayed by one of his closest followers. He even says when he's praying before that that he is overcome with sorrow. And then his followers abandoned him, denied knowing him, and he was left alone. And in fact, some of, some of the people that had gathered around to hear him speak uh, during his ministry were now chanting for his crucifixion. They were calling out for his death. Jesus knows what it means to be sad. Jesus knows what sorrow is. And he has promised that he will be with you in your sadness. John 16, verse 33 says, I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart. I have overcome the world. We're going to have difficult times but we can have joy in our lives when we remember the promise of Christ that he has overcome the world, that we have been redeemed. And even though we may have the emotion of sadness, we can, we can have the joy and the peace that passes all understanding because we trust in Christ's sacrifice and we trust in the fact that he has promised that one day, as Revelation 21 says, the dwelling place of God will be with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people. And God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. We may suffer sadness for a little while, as Peter says, but we have the promise that the former things will pass away, that God will make all things new, and that there'll be no more pain, no more tears, no more suffering, no more death, and we will be restored to the way that we were created to be with emotions, but not with the effects of sin, but not with the, with, with the brokenness that we currently walk around with. So as you go through this year, as you try to navigate through your emotions, remember that you can be sad, but remember the joy that comes from knowing that even in the midst of sadness, you've been redeemed by Christ. He laid down his life for you. He is right there with you, and he knows exactly what it is to be dealing with sadness. And, and he has promised that one day, all things will be made new and set right. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you that you have created us with emotions, that you created us in your image, but we lament the fact that we are broken images and that our emotions and how we manage them have been broken. So Lord God, I pray that you would work in us to develop the fruit of the Spirit so that our character and how we manage our emotions would be more Christ-like than worldly. Lord God, I pray that if anyone is dealing with sadness today, if they're dealing with sadness that is a result of their own actions and they've come face to face with the fact that they have messed up and they need to make changes, I pray that that godly grief will lead them to repentance. Lord God, I pray that they will turn from their old ways and follow after you. I pray that they will, will follow Jesus Christ, acknowledge him as Lord, making him the, in charge of everything, and and trust in his sacrifice for their salvation. And Lord God, for those of us that are dealing with sadness that, that is beyond our control, and when we don't understand, I pray that you would strengthen our faith, that your grace would be sufficient for us. And Lord, I pray that, that we would have the joy that comes from knowing that you have redeemed us, and that you will one day make all things new and we will no longer have any pain or suffering or sadness because you have brought us back into your family and because you will restore us to, to the way that you intended us to be. In your name, amen.
And so as a, a final act of our worship today, I want to give you another opportunity to generously give. If you're believing for a big miracle, even in your finances and in your home, let's sow a big seed and trust that God would do it. And as you watch online, we've made it very simple. We've made it very safe for you to be able to, to give. And so if you look on the banner at the bottom of the screen, you'll, you'll see exactly what to do. You can click on give uh, at the top of the viewing page, or you can navigate to calvary.ca forward slash give, or on your mobile device, text the word Calvary CA to the number 73256. And again, thank you. Thank you for giving generously. And I want to ask you to stay faithful. Stay faithful in your giving. And here's why. You know, as we go through this together, we've been able to already minister to people within our own church community. We've been able to minister to our mission partners around the world, helping them through difficult times. And, and through all of this, we stay and remain committed to help the vulnerable, those that are, are, are less fortunate and going through difficult times. And so we support and partner with the City Dream Center, with Night Shift Ministries. And so it's because of your sacrifice, your giving, and your participation that makes some of those things possible. And we want to be an active participant in serving our community through such a difficult time. Let's continue to be the church. Let's be the church strong. Let's be that light that shines in the darkness, that as people are dealing with uncertainty, that they can connect with a group of people who know the one who has is, who is given us the certainty of peace that will never change in our lives. Help us to make a, a, a difference in, in the community. Continue ministering to the people that need it the most. Again, thank you. So today, I wanna, as we close our service, I want to pray for your giving, that God would bless you for those of you that are navigating some financial challenges, I want to pray for God's miracle hand in your life. Father, we thank you today for every gift, for every giver. I pray, God, for your blessing to be upon everyone who's watching today, who's joining us for church online, that you would bless them abundantly in their giving as they do so generously. I believe for miracles in their own lives, that you would protect them, that you would be their source through it all. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen.